Fran Fraschilla joining us now on the ESPN and Westwood One College Basketball Analyst. You can help me out with this a little bit, Fran, is that everything has been about Zion, 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 and Duke, and, you know, a couple other guys here and there, but what other players should we be watching during this tournament as it kicks off tomorrow in the field of 64? Uh, oh, yeah, there, there'll, be, there'll be guys that come out of nowhere and are heroes, Kirk. Um, you know, off the bat, if Wofford is one of those Cinderella stories, you got to look at Fletcher McGee, young man who is two three-pointers away from tying the all-time record. He's close to 500 three-point shots. Mm. And obviously, Wofford's had a great season, only four losses, all four losses to high major teams. So that's a guy to keep in mind. Uh, I just got done watching Iowa State uh, win the Big 12 title. Right. And uh, how about Marielle Shayok? The transfer from Virginia, one twenty-point game in his first 101 games at Virginia. This year he plays at uh, Iowa State, and he has 14 20-point games and uh, second-leading score in the Big 12. Those are two guys that uh, immediately jump out at me. Um, you know, this, it's one of those deals where every year we, uh, we find new heroes because uh, this tournament has always been about this basketball reality TV. You know, friend, what, what gets everybody's attention is when the sirens go off, and that means it's an upset alert. Who, who should be on upset alert when you look at this uh, the opening round games? Well, you know what? Um, we just saw Auburn play great in, mm. the, uh, in the SEC tournament, winning, winning the uh, tournament title, obviously, and they really put things together over, the, over that week. But, uh, you know, all of a sudden they're going to see a New Mexico State team that's 30-4, and four play like a bunch of junkyard dogs. And, you know, we know about Buffalo. We kind of know about Murray State and John Morant and obviously Nevada out west. But uh, that's, a, that's a team that comes to mind. I, w- I would not sleep on uh, Utah uh, State. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think Utah State's got a very, very dangerous team. Uh, they gave uh, – they beat Nevada two out of three times, played great in their Mountain West tournament. And uh, – They've got a really good balance of great outside shooting and a terrific freshman big man from Portugal, uh, Kata, I believe, who, uh, you know, could become a name. So, you know, if you're playing Utah State, I think you've got to be concerned. And, uh, you know, I, 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 a, a team that I really like, and it's not an upset, but in the 8-9 game, I, I see a team like Central Florida. Mm. Uh, how, cool, how cool would it be if Johnny Dawkins' team beats VCU and then sees – uh, you know, Duke in the next round, his mentor. And Johnny is probably the most important player in, in Duke history. Many have made that argument because he was the guy that turned Coach K's Duke program around in the mid-'80s. He's Fran Fraschella, ESPN, and Westwood, one college basketball analyst, joining the Rich Eisen Show, Kirk Morrison, filling in for Rich. Um, obviously, when you look at the four number one seeds, someone doesn't fit, right? I mean, they're not in the ACC. So I guess Gonzaga, yep. they're the team that's the odd man out in terms of they didn't even win their conference tournament yet. They still got the number one seed. We understand that play well all season long. But how do we view Gonzaga as compared to the three ACC teams who got number one seeds? Well, you know what? Um, it's really interesting. Uh, I would have said uh, prior to the loss of St. Mary's that Gonzaga – you know, if you put Kentucky and you put Duke in the WCC, that they would not have rolled through those leagues any differently than Gonzaga did. I mean, mm-hmm. they would have won by an average of 28 points a game as well. Now, Gonzaga comes in with a little, you know, scratch on the armor here because of that in- inexplicable loss to St. Mary's in the, uh, in the WCC final. And, and so I still love them, uh, Kirk, but here's the problem. I also love Florida State. And I think what – Leonard Hamilton has done this year with this team, 27 and seven, meeting Duke in the uh, you know in the ACC final. Um, they have essentially the same team back that went to the Elite Eight last year. And so while I really like Gonzaga and I definitely think they're capable of winning the national championship, I've got Florida State advancing past both Gonzaga and Michigan in my bracket because I believe in uh, Leonard Hamilton's uh, team's athleticism, their depth, their size inside. So I. I that's, that's a tough matchup out west for Gonzaga. You know, Fran, I need, to, I need your expertise on this one because you can take me behind the curtain a little bit because you've coached in these NCAA tournament games. You've been to the postseason. You understand what it takes in order to succeed. So how do you handle the emotions of the players? You know, this is a big stage for a lot of guys. And, yep. you know, obviously you're going to have to make adjustments. You're going to have to make some changes. 
How do you do that in a game in which, you know, hey, if we don't play well, we're out. There is no game after that. How do you make those changes, you know, throughout a basketball game? Well, it's a great, it's a great question, Kirk. I think, first of all, you've got to stay positive and you've got to be upbeat and you've got to celebrate your season. You know, mm-hmm. I actually lost the tournament game in 1998 uh, when St. John's lost to Detroit because I had my team too much on edge. You know, mm. I didn't want us to lose, lose the edge we had. Uh, you know, with the, uh, playing in the Big East the whole season, and that was the wrong approach. Um, now I have, had, I have had other teams like Manhattan upset in Oklahoma a 4-13 game. So here's my answer: Number one, celebrate the success. Selection Sunday and the 12 hours after that, you know, enjoy the accolades, the press conferences, the media uh, spotlight that you're under, and then you get back to business and you have to prepare the NCAA tournament. Uh, you're only, you're only going to play two games in one weekend, and you don't know who you're playing in the second game. Right. So you treat it like you were playing in an in-season 14 tournament, and you have to keep uh, everything as routine as possible. The kids know it's a big deal, but you have to be relaxed, and that's, uh, you know, that's really important. They have to see you're relaxed, that you're prepared, and that we're treating this next game like any other game that we prepare for uh, on the schedule. And, uh, you know, keep them, keep them as normal as possible. Fran Fraschilla, ESPN and Westwood One College basketball analyst, joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show. Kirk Morrison filling in for Rich. Just a couple more minutes with you, Fran. Um, you first went to the tournament in 1993. And now in 2019, what do you think has been the biggest difference when you look at the tournament from when you first appeared as a coach to where the tournament is now? Well, it's amazing. Well, I, I can even remember my first, you know, years – as a young coach, I can remember 1982, 83, as an assistant at Ohio, you go into the tournament, 48 teams. You played in, uh, you, you, you know, you, uh, 33 through 48 played into the tournament. Uh, I'm not sure how they did it, but I know they were in 64. Um, it's just so much bigger. You know, it, right. it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious to see that, that, uh, you know, whether it's CBS and Turner, and, and the way the tournament is now televised and the exposure and throw social media into that, throw the, the hype that we create throughout the season. Uh, you know, Zion playing in his first and only NCAA tournament. It's just, uh, you know, it's all encompassing. Um, they call it March Madness for a reason. It used to be just simply the bat and NCAA basketball championship. Right. But I think I'd have to take you back to what I said earlier in the conversation. We have created uh, must-watch reality TV in March and early April because none of us knows what's going to happen. Um, you know, you expect the unexpected. A uh, team finally beat one. Uh, somebody hits a 50-footer at the buzzer to, you know, knock somebody else out. Uh, celebrations, running around the court, buzzer beaters, heartbreak, kids crying. It's what I love about the tournament, and it's become so big, and it's become that's why it's become such a part of American sports. Hey, friend, I know I got to let you go, but I got 30 seconds real quick. I know you got Florida State coming out of the West, but when you look at the South and the Midwest, I personally got Tennessee out of the South, North Carolina out of the Midwest. How do you see the South and the Midwest kind of shaking up? Well, I love Tennessee, and I work I work for Rick Barnes and uh, at Providence, and, you know, um, I've got enormous respect for Tennessee. I, I, I just um, – I got a sneaky suspicion that Virginia is the best team in the tournament. I, mm-hmm. um they lost to Duke twice. I get it. Um, and I, I, it wouldn't shock me if Tennessee gets to the Final Four. But I, I really like Virginia. And uh, on the other side, Kentucky beat North Carolina by 10 on a neutral court in December. I think this is a better uh, North Carolina team. I, I, like, I like North Carolina coming out of that region as well. Um, I'm excited to watch Houston play, obviously. Um, you know, I've got a, a little investment in Villanova. I, <laughs> right. I think they've had a great year. They can get to the Sweet 16. But for me, on that side of the bracket, I see Virginia and North Carolina. And you know what, Kurt? Um, I think there's only been one time in NCAA history, if I'm not mistaken, that three teams from the same conference got to a Final Four, mm-hmm. and that would have been 85. So it's possible, the way this is set up, that we could see um, at least two ACC teams, maybe three. And how crazy would it be if we saw four? Yeah, so I guess you're saying Duke out of the East End. I got it, Fran. Appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> hey, Fran, thanks for the time. I know you got a lot going on, but look forward oh, yeah, to they're hearing you on the, the calls. Door. They're, saying they're closing the door. I'm headed to New York for Westwood. Well, I'm so <laughs> All right. excited. Sounds That's good. Thanks, thanks Fran. Sir. Appreciate it. <laughs>
That's Fran Fraschilla, ESPN and Westwood One. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.